Mary Hamelin, and I am a researcher based at the lab called TBI, Toulouse Biotechnology Institute. I work with life cycle assessment. I do that all the time, I feel, <laughs> even when I dream or when I shop, wondering <laughs> is this better or is this better. <laughs> Maybe you will get this disease after the course as well. And I apply it mostly to biomass conversion processes. So uh, yes, I work in this big ambition to uh, make this transition from uh, fossil-based carbon towards a society that will use no oil and gas if possible. So we try to find what's the best way to do this. Uh, for France, but we could generalize it also for other countries. So um, the case is as follows, uh, and it's a real case. So there's a company in Denmark, it's called Mabian Biotechnology, and what they want to do is to use TRO um, to produce a second generation bio-based ethanol. So uh, the company is located here, and then they get their straw in a 100 uh, kilometer radius from the company. Um, they claim that uh, by doing that, they only use 15% of the straw that would not be used anyway uh, for animals, bedding, for example. Uh, yes, so the, with that, they can produce 77 million liters of bioethanol. Uh, that's the equivalent of, um, I noted it, I don't remember by heart, but it can fuel 70,000 cars per year, so it's not insignificant. Uh, yes, but then it also produces some co-products. So you produce your bioethanol, but there is also uh, 92,000 tons of molasses. That's a liquid where the, most of the nitrogen will be, and um, a little bit of the um, unhydrolyzed uh, carbohydrates will be there as well. And then you have about the same amount, to make it simple, uh, of solid biofuel that would be mostly the lignine that would be there. Uh, so these would be the two residues you generate. So now um, I would like you to discuss uh, between you the number one and the number two. Do you think this is a good business case for in the perspective of a green future? Do you think it makes sense to do that? And I forgot to say, I put in blue here, there is the Renewable Energy Directive uh, that has been updated. And there they say that they should be 40% renewable energy in transport by 2050. Uh, 2030, sorry, for each member state. Uh, and then 3.5 of that should be advanced fuel by 2030. So that means uh, with second or third generation, so not uh, first generation, not crops that you directly grow on land and, and use for biofuel. Uh, so I will let the number one together and then the number two together to discuss not long, like two, three minutes, if you think this is a good case or not and why. So, yes. So number one, you can go on this side, and then number two on this side.
always producing the great talents and light. Factory is from the same region. From the uh, from this uh, hundred kilometer radius, yeah, from the plant. Mm -hmm. That's why I like providing steady supply. What no, it's, it's just more or less. The, uh, I just want yeah. to discuss you to discuss it qualitatively. Uh, what kinds of the solid? Solid it's lignin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, but the straw used at the counter factory is a reject. Um, they claim that they, they use 15% of the straw that uh, would not be used for animals. Ah. 15. 15, yeah. So this straw that they need, it, it represents, they say, 15% 15 of 15, 1, 5 yet of straw that would not be um, used for animals. Mm -hmm. So I can see you had a quick uh, feeling <laughs> of the case. Um, who of you think that this is a good case? It's a good idea to do that. Raise your hand. One, two, <laughs> shy hand. Yeah, yes, three. I don't know. I, I have no, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone thinks it's not a good idea? And some unsure. Yes and no. Your vote. But uh, those of you that think so, I, we had two here that thought it was a good idea. What would be your arguments? Why would you say this sounds like a good case? It's using the residual um, rest resource, and I guess. There could be benefit. There are benefits of it just staying in ground. So maybe we have to quantify that, like how much is there's a trade-off. But first, they say that it's something that is wasted, and that's why it's using the fans. It's it also in the category of a fans fuel, which could meet the energy directive need. And then it's making bioethanol that is needed for the economy. So I sh if I should rephrase uh, your argument, so it is, I got two parts of it. One part was, okay, it is a way to meet the renewable energy directive, so maybe it's not so bad. Then the second part, which was the first thing you said, um, so you say it's a waste, so it should be fine, but then you brought, you, then you kind of brought a counter argument, <laughs> or providing that. Uh, it's more than. It, because you said it could go to the soil also. Yeah. So not doing anything with it still brings a service. Mm -hmm. So the carbon would replenish mm -hmm. the soil. Mm -hmm. uh, and by doing that, you don't have this anymore. Yeah, so if the outcome benefit is more than just leaving it in the soil. So basically here you're a bit, it depends. Well, we Maybe it's not so number, good. Yeah? But I would hope that it's more than that. <laughs> yeah, but that's a good point. That's one thing I wanted you to, um, to capture, that this straw, uh, it's not true. OK, maybe it's not used for the animals. But <laughs> using it for that, d take it away from something else anyway, because mm -hmm. then it would just be left on the land, and that carbon would replenish the soil. So you don't have this uh, replenishment of the soil anymore mm -hmm. in this way. And our soil tend to get poorer in carbon, and with climate change, uh, so with, with the warmer temperature, we even lose <laughs> more carbon from the soil. So uh, this is an issue, of course. That's one thing. Anything else you could think? Why we will need to think carefully before investing? Because this is big money, yeah. When you have, yeah, that's part of the answer. <laughs> yeah, there could be also transport energy used to carry them. Hundred kilometers, but hundred is not too far. No, not too far. No. 
the freedom knows the details of the processes for 2G by the way. Here are the process engineers talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, perhaps the process is not uh, good for development or something. Maybe you use some solvents yes, or... Yes, exactly, yes. Yeah. Um, maybe the, the, the coal product, it's called like that? Yeah. 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 Need any kind of treatments or I don't know, I don't know about the molas, for example, what, what is it used for? Yeah, there we go, it depends what it's used for. Mm -hmm. uh, one way to use it, because it contains nitrogen, so you can use it uh, as a protein source for animal. Okay. Uh, with very easy processing and this is a good thing in a way because then you will not have to produce the feed directly mm. uh, but it's also because it's a liquid so it's also just sometimes put in biogas reactor uh, so here they do both mm. with that and this one they typically just burn it and okay. then it, but it produces heat and power and that is not produced otherwise so what you yeah the, the thing there is that they produce this for transport so it means that you were talking about the process, the solvents, but still need to remember that then you have bioethanol instead of diesel. Mm. So you don't have the diesel, which is, yeah. <laughs> that's also a big, uh, heavy processing uh, as well. However, uh, what we have to remember is that once you invest in this technology, uh, it's there for a long time because they need to make their investment profitable so at least 50 years, this plant is going to be there producing bioethanol. It means for 50 years, your straw will be derived in there because they need to feed it <laughs> with lignin. Yeah. So if it's not straw, it's going to be some other lignocellulosic feedstock, but they need it. Uh, and it also means that for 50 years, we have this uh, bioethanol, but are we going to need that for transport all this mm -hmm. time? We already have alternative today. Mm -hmm. For transport, for passengers in your car, it's yeah. like less like, high energy density is bioethanol as well. Maybe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You need to calculate the, that to make the equivalency. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is true, but still, you have electric car coming, mm -hmm. so um, so it doesn't look that smart if this is your market. You can think. So, so this is the kind of thinking you will need to get in your mind as we go through the course today. Um, so we call consequential SCA. Any comments or questions? So the bioethanol cannot be used for the freight transport? Like the it can be used for different things. It can also be used for the, the chemical industry, or uh, bioplastics, for example, if you make a bio-based PT. There's a different thing you can use ethanol for. Uh, but uh, you I can wonder if, first of all, do the you have to remember that the straw is then not available for something else, if you use it for that. Um, and then, yes, if you do that for the transport sector, uh, you can also uh, think twice if there are alternatives. So, uh, some of you said that they know about LCA, and I'd like to ask you what is LCA, from what you know. <laughs> and I mean, you all have heard of it. So, what is what it is in your understanding from now? And if I ask you the same question later today, then you probably have a different answer. <laughs> Anybody wants to risk? Assess the environmental consequences in the products and services for life cycle. Is that written? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you said assess, so yeah, it's an assessment methodology. Yeah. Environmental consequences, true, so it's not social, it's not economic, it's really focusing only on environmental mm -hmm. um, consequences or impact. And you said product and services, so it is true, it looks at product, it looks at services. Did you hear anything else about LCA? I said to create a degree of animal term associated with that. What does that mean? Like from the initial, like yeah. raw materials and yeah. how those raw materials are generated, then the end product and how the end products are treated. So it covers the whole life cycle yeah. of the product, yeah, from, as you say, the, the raw material extraction, the cradle, mm -hmm. and then throughout the whole product manufacturing, mm -hmm. uh, the use, mm -hmm. and up to the disposal phase. Mm -hmm. So cradle to game. That's true. Mm -hmm. 
production processes that you have the concerns about the environmental impact that this process is prefer is good or better for the element. It's my basic understanding. I don't understand that. Uh, but the process is all something that you have to study to make sure that the cost of the process can be better for the element. Like the something that. So you will use LCA to decide. Yeah. If uh, it makes sense, what do you mean by better? Better than what? Better than comparing with the different technologies or different processes. Oh, so it's a comparative method. Yeah. So yeah. You, you compare. Yeah. That's, that's true. That's, that's true. It's a comparative yeah. method. And you can choose with which state you would like to study, like from the starting point of the, or uh, how do you get like the raw materials, or the second one in the uh, production per se and the third one for this garden. You, you don't choose, choose, eh? You have to do it all. <laughs> but it is true that then you can, uh, if you discover mm -hmm. that one phase matters a lot, then you can try to optimize uh, and try to see where the hot spots. So, uh, yes, you know a bit. Um, yeah, so it's a leading environmental assessment methodology. Uh, I was happy to hear that uh, it's uh, required for the job market in France. But it's also true in, uh, at the European level. It's very often the case for EU projects. Uh, we need sometimes to have LCAs in it. So it's standardized. So there is a standard. Uh, it's ISO 104040 and uh, 104044. There are these two standards for LCA. Uh, it's cradle to grave, uh, as we said. And uh, oh yeah, it quantifies, so it's not just a qualitative methodology, but it's really a quantitative methodology uh, for the environmental consequences of product and services. Uh, so yes, it considers the whole life cycle, but also it considers all the substances involved. So therefore, all the possible environmental impact, not only climate change, for example, as some LCA do, wrongly. Uh, when we illustrate it, it can look like that. Uh, so that's the principle of cradle to grave, huh? from material production up to the disposal. Uh, so yeah, that's here an illustration with the light bulb. So you would have to account for all the impacts of uh, the aluminium here in the cap, the glass, for example, everything you need to produce it. When you put it together, there are emissions, you take it into account. You use electricity every time you turn it on and off that uh, you take into account and then at some point it goes to disposal, some part may be recycled, uh, you account for that, some part may be landfill, other might be incinerated. So that's the principle. So now uh, you know about the whole flow of substance or your, of your light bulb. Uh, how can you judge of the environmental consequences? So you, yeah, you have like three kilogram of CO two, five kilogram of ammonia. Uh, let's just say, <laughs> and yeah, three kilogram of uh, methane. How can you know uh, about the environmental consequences of that? You have to know that which raw material that you use first. And yeah. Which process that you use? How many in the facility? Yes, that's your inventory. But um, you still uh, you need to go to a one more phase. So to take all this flow of substance and translate it into actual environmental impact. Mm -hmm. And that's a phase called the impact assessment. It will allow you to make this translation from substances to impact categories. Um, so to make it very, very, very basic, <laughs> it can look like that. So you have different type of impacts, global warming, acidification, eutrophication. You have your different phase of the life cycle. Uh, and then you can show, uh, so for your uh, light bulb here, how much if of, of this phase matter. Um, or you can zoom in, for instance, and it could look like that for the case of climate. Uh, we, of course, don't provide results like this, but it can look uh, like that. <laughs> so you can break down your impact uh, per processes. Uh, 
as you have there, and then you have it for different environmental impact. We can come back to this kind of diagram later, how you present results. You can also focus on um, which substances, so for a certain process, you would like to know which substances are contributing to the environmental impact, and then you could produce uh, some information like that. Yes? How can you decide that which impact assessment you would like to use? Like which methodology or uh, which impact category? The impact category. Uh, that's a very good question uh, because, and we will come back to the impact assessment part. Now I just present you uh, the helicopter view. Uh, but sometimes you need to know the answer before you can choose. <laughs> you know what matters because you have to take into account what matters. But how do you know before you start what matters? Uh, by experience, of course, you start to have an understanding. But um, yes, there are different methodology, and one of them will tell you the, some impact categories. Anyway, they are not really good uh, in the sense that we don't have very good metrics. So uh, sometimes these you, you may want to exclude because anyway it's difficult to make interpretation. Uh, sometimes also they require data that you didn't get. So um, yeah, that's one way. But now I would uh, recommend that take as many impact as possible. And then those where your interpretation is not good, just mention it. Uh, now you have quantified the impact involved in your incandescent uh, light bulb. But again, that doesn't tell you much. It's not interesting as long as you compare it, uh, until you compare it with something else. Because just knowing, okay, it has a global warming potential of uh, 3 kilogram of CO2 equivalent, so is that good or not? Uh, it's not very interesting. It's uh, only interesting the moment you compare it with alternative. Uh, so yeah, typically, um, sorry, NLC will answer two main questions. So is A better than B or C or D or E? You can, of course, have many uh, alternatives. And uh, as we were saying before, where in my life cycle do I have a hotspot? So where is it? Is it the use phase that is really important? Uh, is it the end of life phase? So where is it that it really matters? There's different type of application. They can be, uh, as we discussed a little earlier, choices. For instance, what choice to make the energy system? Should we have a bio-based society? Or should we keep investing in the fossil? But we can, yeah, we can dig. Dig, dig deeper in the ground, and then we can store uh, the carbon uh, in, the, in the ground. That's one way we can do uh, carbon capture. Uh, is uh, Another perspective could be more simple. Uh, I have this plastic uh, mayonnaise bottle. Uh, what should I do with it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> should, should I wash it and use a lot of hot water and detergent to remove all the fat? from it and use it as a flower pot in my house? Or should I just send it to incineration? So all the fat will be a lot of energy anyway that will avoid um, natural gas uh, to be burned. Uh, yes, so that's uh, not, you know, you, you don't know uh, beforehand. It's, it's not so easy to know. Uh, or, yeah, how can my product be more efficient on an environmental perspective? So for instance, with the pump, uh, we figure out, okay, the use phase matter a lot, so how could we make it in a way that it's less energy consuming? Uh, could be another uh, way of using LCA. Uh, some other very important questions. So I put the yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> symbol. What does it replace? So well, the discussion we had with the straw, there's nothing for free. Uh, that was, there's no free lunch. I always try to remember that. So if the straw, like we were taking, is not used for the animal, maybe, but it would have been used. And something would have happened with it. What is that something? Because now we take it away, and that something is not happening anymore. So it's a consequence we need to capture. Uh, and then another thing is that if A is better than B, then we will produce more of A in the world. Uh, what are the consequences of that? Mm -hmm. uh, so if it's the case um, uh, yeah, of infrastructure, for instance, we say, okay, uh, 
uh, we have a new, we decide for ways that incineration is better, we uh, invest in new uh, infrastructure for incineration, it will produce heat and power, but it will be there for the next 40, 50 years. So what electricity are we going to replace uh, in 50 years? Is it going to be good all the way or not? So in three bullets, LCA focus on services, so different way to provide a given service to society, because even your product provides a service at the end. It's comparative and it's holistic. So both it looks at the whole life cycle, but also all the substance. Um, yes, we hear a lot of different terms, so you might get lost in the terms. There is, a, we say, the cradle to grave, but there is also cradle to gate. Anyone know about that? I can remember. What is it? Cradle to gate? Yeah. We have stopped, this is, is our case in the laboratory, because we have to stop in the production side. Yeah. So I don't know the disposal, the, uh, the end use of the product, we don't know. Yeah. What is happening after production? So most of the time we do the evaluation by considering cradle to gate. We did that with the student uh, from Caroline. Yeah, and yeah, uh, so to we have to stop because it's not clear to define after production what happens. Sometimes it's not clear. So yeah. okay. But this is what it means anyway. The gates so are you stop at a certain place in the life cycle. Mm -hmm. For instance, in this case, I'm thinking of it was for uh, making some bio based panel inside of uh, planes. Uh, planes. And uh, if you stop at the gate, then it's, it looks good to do that, to, to use a bio-based material instead of a glass fiber that you would have normally used. But then, if you consider the use phase, so the whole point was to make the plane lighter, but actually didn't because of the, the, the requirements are so uh, high for planes, so you need uh, anti-fire glue, mm -hmm. and uh, at the end it was heavier with the bio-based fiber compared to the glass fiber <laughs> because we needed to put more glue because of the way, the, the shape of the material at the micro level, microscopic level. So uh, if you consider the use phase, uh, then it was uh, very bad. <laughs> so if you made the whole life cycle, it was not good, but if you stopped at just this uh, bio-based panel, then it was good. Uh, yeah. Uh, cradle to cradle, anyone had heard that before? Like yeah, it's when, it, when you consider recycling, basically, so it's coming back. So that's uh, well to wheel. So in the fuel, um, so yeah, it's more it's life cycle approach, but it's when it's based on biofuels, some use it. There's a, a very famous report called the well to wheel report. They wanted to sound fancy <laughs> in some way. <laughs> so, but this is the LCA applied to fuels. Uh, carbon footprint. Do you know what that is? Or you heard that for sure? It's a very trendy word. Uh, it can be in different units, uh, kilogram or whatever, but a uh, carbon footprint, uh, this is um, based on LCA, not necessarily always <laughs> following the ISO standard, but it will only look at CO2. Okay. It may include other uh, greenhouse gas. So is it one of the environmental impact, one of the categories? Uh, no, there's a category called global warming. But the carbon okay. footprint would be a sort of LTA study focusing only on um, CO2 okay. or at best greenhouse gases okay. because uh, nitrogen is not carbon, right? And two yeah. is a greenhouse gas, but it's not carbon. So. Is the carbon dioxide equivalent or uh, This is a, a metric for one impact that is called climate change. We'll come back to this <laughs> In this case, carbon footprint, it's more like absolute numbers because often they don't compare it just like, oh, the carbon footprint of this product is this number. Yeah, it is very confusing, yeah, because sometimes some people will call it the carbon footprint of, or some will say, the carbon, it's a carbon footprint study. Mm -hmm. So what is it yes. exactly? Huh? Um, 
So you see this word, take it carefully, what that means. Uh, <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. It's, it's in, when you have LCA, not all LCA respect the ISO standard, even though they claim they do, but it, it's something standardized and it's very comprehensive and broad. When you have something carbon footprint, you can have a little red light in your mind. Mm -mm. What, what okay. is this? <laughs> take this value very carefully and try to see what does that embed. Does it take only CO2? Does it take other greenhouse gases? Sometimes you see system analysis. Um, not so much anymore, but uh, at some point it was emerging. And it was to illustrate when you um, merge LCA with energy system analysis, among other, it has been used a lot for that. Uh, you will see product environmental footprint, PEF. So uh, this is the, um, no, I'm a bit afraid how I can say that on tape, <laughs> but uh, this is a DG environment. So at the European level, uh, there are different uh, direction. And one is DG environment, and they came out with this, uh, well, there's the product environmental footprint, and there's the environmental footprint method uh, that they really want uh, everybody to use uh, for impact assessment. So, uh, and now it's very strong because uh, the different DGs say, oh, if it's not PEF compliant, then we're not so interested in using it. Mm. Uh, yes, so you will see, so product environmental footprint, if you, I'll give you some websites uh, later on. They made some uh, study for different type of products like, yes, selected type, shampoo is one, <laughs> there's different other. And then they, it's really interesting though, they, there's many companies that contributed and they, they strive to make LCAs, comprehensive LCAs, based on their methodology for these products. Uh, you also have environmental product declaration, so that's more business to business communication, uh, short term indicators documented. Let's see if I know to know that. Any questions so far? I heard about ecological, what is it, like the bag? I just don't remember the exact term. They talk about having this backpack or a weight of how much materials are used in producing something. Ecological footprint, maybe? Maybe, but yeah. Mm -hmm. If, uh, how many planets would we need if... Uh, no, like for example, this is yeah. like 100 gram, but the material used to produce this is like how many tons of material? Oh, a sort of material like footprint. Yeah, uh, yeah. So like in terms, okay. like not in the emission terms. And okay. You know, I was wondering if they also base their like, calculation in the LC terms. I'm not sure. Yeah. That one, I'm not sure. I don't fully know, but this is true. There's a lot of. Uh, and people are a clever way, actually. So people start with this kind of uh, thing, but uh, then you have to. Um, to see to which extent this information is really valuable mm. or not <laughs> for taking a decision. Um, any other questions? I would just care. Like the cradle to gate, sometimes you have to stop because you don't have information, but some cases if the product is exactly the same, you don't have to do the end use and disposal. Right? If you just want to compare the pro different process and then you're supposed to make the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to just stop at the gate by mm -hmm. the production? <laughs> Possible, everything is possible, but then you have to to think. Okay, am I supplying a valuable uh, decision support material to my stakeholders? So first of all, you need to ensure that your systems are comparable always, and we we'll come back to this with examples. Uh, and you have, I mean, there is a reason why the LCA is from cradle to grave. Yeah. Because that's the, the whole point that you should not, uh, that if you don't do that, then you, you have the risk of uh, supplying a partial answer, an incomplete answer. So you figure out, oh yeah, this product is good, but damn it. <laughs> oh, it consumes so much more fuels, and at the end, it's, it's worse than the other alternatives. So this is why we need the complete uh, information. And I would say, when we say we don't have enough data, um, we don't agree there. We don't, if you don't know the data, don't ignore it, or don't put a zero, but try to estimate. It's always better than ignoring and pretending it's not there. 
uh, and then you could go a bit more qualitatively. Okay, if this, then it's that. If it's a bit better, then it's that. Uh, but at least it gives you a range where you could be, uh, rather than just ignoring at uh, the first place. Uh, this, according to the ISO standard, are the phases of uh, LCA. So there are four. There is the golden scope. Uh, and this is where you will come back to it, but where you define basically what you're going to study. Then there is the inventory phase. This is where you get crazy. <laughs> you collect data. Uh, this is the very tedious phase of the LCA. Uh, then you have the impact assessment, so you, where you will translate all these flow of substance into impact. Uh, and then the interpretation phase, so, and that we sometimes neglect it because we spend so much time in the beginning, but that's very important, that's why it's so big here. Uh, this is what it means. So what do I get out of all that? What insights uh, there are? And you can see the arrows are uh, double-sided. Yeah, wh why is that? You always go back and forth. It's iterative, yeah, you'll see it's an iterative process. So you might figure out that, um, okay, I used the uh, Polish data, but I'm studying a French case, but I didn't have the French value. But um, now I realize that this data is so important on the final results, I may want to get the actual French value because, uh, mm -hmm. and then you go back. <laughs> and then you can do that uh, a few times like that, yeah. So yes, as we were saying, it's iterative. In, in some way, you need the results in order to be able to scope it. So you start, and then when you see, oh, that mattered a lot, so, okay, I will try to get a better quality data on that, and then you can do a few phase <laughs> run and run like that until you feel that, okay, any further um, trying to get a better quality would not yield or would not change the uncertainty. Uh, trying, sorry, trying to get less uncertainty would not improve the quality anymore. So now I can, we feel we can stop. So the first phase, the goal definition, uh, there you need, this is where you decide which decision this LCA is intended to support. And I didn't insist on that at the beginning, but I should have. Uh, the goal or the point of LCA is to support decision. This is why we do that. So it needs to be, you need to know who's going to use it, and you need to make sure it's going to be useful for them. Uh, so which decision is this LC intended to support? Uh, as I said, who is the target audience uh, to whom my results will be communicated? And what are the results to carry out, uh, what are the reasons, sorry, to carry out this LCA? This is uh, taken uh, from the ISO standard. Then you have um, the scope definition. That's probably the most important phase of the LCA, I would say, because if you don't get this right, then you can spend a lot of energy and data uh, documenting the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> so please do that uh, properly. This is where you will make your process flow diagram, so identifying what are the processes to be taken into account, and we'll come back to that. So there, <coughs> sorry. You define the object of your studies. Um, so what is it that I'm going to, what product system am I going to compare? Uh, you will uh, look at what are my primary and secondary services. Anyone knows what that means? What would be primary service? Of the product you mean? Yeah, pr pr product or service. So primary is, is exactly actually what you want to it's supply. Yeah, it's okay. a, why you do the study for. Mm -hmm. But what would be a secondary then? The side product. The side product. Can you give an example? Like when we did bioethanol, there were molasses. Then. Yeah, so we wanted to supply the bioethanol, but there were also molasses, and there was also um, yeah. the, the solid air fuel, yes. Uh, sometimes it's uh, like that, sometimes you don't really maybe notice it, like 
here we are in this room and then we use here the projector and then it gives us a bit of free heat in the room Mm. Meaning that uh, we don't need to put the temperature so high. That's a bit cold, actually. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that's also a kind of secondary service. Uh, okay. uh, so yeah, you need to identify these. Uh, we need to define a functional unit. So uh, that's how we ensure that our system can be compared. That's what the LC do. We will um, yeah assign uh, this. So we will decide what is it that we are <laughs> doing this for? There's three um, key uh, parameters of a functional unit. The first is a, a quality, so to describe uh, what you want to supply. The other one is a quantity, so we were saying before a certain quantity of biodiesel, maybe 10 liter of biodiesel is what I want to supply, and the duration, so for how long. So 10 liter of biodiesel at a certain quality, we could be very yeah, specific, uh, and for 40 years, because that could be a type of functional unit. Uh, you will need to define reference flow. So to supply your, bio your biodiesel, you will need different input and output. Uh, and according to the alternative that you compare, these would be different, but we will come back to that. Uh, you need to also think about um, the geographical scope. So where is it that you want to do that, this bioethanol? Do you want it for the French market? Or you want to produce it in France but for the global market? You need to think about that. Uh, well, temporarily, as we said, for how long? And uh, technologically, yeah, I would say yes and no. Because uh, here, obviously, if it's uh, investment happen in the future, and decision will happen in the future as well. So your LC will support decision to happen in the future. And of course, you're going to take the technology that is going to be there in the future. So some will say, do we take the average technology or do we take the best available technology? Yeah, but you, you can frame. I tend to often go for the best available. Because why investing in, in the worst? But it's good to show, though, the comparison sometimes. Uh, yes, and that's where you make uh, your process flow diagram, as I was saying. Any question in this stage? So we will go back together in one and two and uh, make a few examples. So you really grab this functional unit and also the reference flow. So here's the first classic case, I may say. <laughs> Um, so the functional unit here is defined for you. Uh, so it's uh, it's about diapers. So functional unit is to absorb and contain the urine and feces of a baby, uh, aged zero to twelve months. So that's quality <laughs> for one year. The quantity here is implicit. So you know it's what the baby produces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we compare two cases. One is a single-use diaper. And here, uh, as a constraint, so we documented our system and we figured out, OK, we need 38 an average diaper a week. And then uh, system B, it's a cotton uh, diaper. So we need 68 a week, but we can reuse it. So oh. it's 150 use per diaper. So, and we wash it uh, between each of the, of the use by hand. Uh, yes, and then to, for simplicity, consider that you wash it each time also before throwing it away. Yeah. So what I would like you uh, to do now is to compare these two. So to tell me, here we have one flow, is the diaper, how many diaper I'm going to need. And here we have two flow, so the diaper and the washing. So uh, quickly in group. Uh, what should be my two reference flow here?
one diaper can be used So, so there are three Why do you need diapers, more diapers in one week, there are 52 weeks, so the weight. baby would need uh, so you have to change nearly 2,000 diapers. Cotton diapers. Yeah. 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 The baby because uses 68 diapers, like but you have to change. Yeah. In that case, it's <laughs> it's you get all wrong. Yeah. Maybe three weeks. <laughs> we can see those that have kids and those that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I used the cotton diaper. Oh, you did? Okay. Yes. Yeah, she knows. Yeah, she knows. Um. But that, that is not true. We wash by hand. Oh, it's yeah. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> but this is for making a meat. Uh, <laughs> simple. <laughs> okay, there's so machine. the machine, of yeah. course. <laughs> <laughs> It's come down to 23. Mm -hmm. Twenty three. Yeah. But we we need to divide by one hundred fifty in my opinion. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. And you get how many time you use per year? Yeah. So we put the number. Put the number for the Thousand expand. One thousand expand. Yeah. Then there's a second. I don't know. Yeah. Then there will be projections. Yeah. Projection. Oh, it's already yeah. divided. Yeah. This one. Yeah, let's see what I am and the home. And then extend. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Let's have the first gate. How can we do after the this one? I think so, I don't know. Which we should, we should take into a fiber of the washing funnel. Yes, of course. Okay. Oh, but we don't really think about how long it takes until it dried and okay. stuff because. <laughs> no, 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 keep it simple. At some point, you, you, you can't yeah, use two diapers. No, no, no. So we have incineration. I guess. Yeah, I guess incineration. Mm -hmm. So we assume that we wash it, it dries on time, so we can only have mm -hmm. to keep it. Yeah. Because, yeah, okay. I think I had this. Now here maybe we can be recycled. For my baby. Yes, but one about 50. Uh, uh, Covered in fibers, so. But they are so dirty. So it could be a biological hazard. <laughs> In the compost uh, table. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe compost table for cotton, cotton fiber. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, so depends it's, on the, the cotton. 3,500 yes. used means yeah. 3,500 wash, right? We have but yeah, 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 yeah. Are so we comparing the numbers? Yeah. Like, diaper, but we need this much wash. Yes. What does this number mean? Um, we don't know. Like, mm -hmm. these are just wipers, and yeah. Down to 23 of them. And right, it's even too much sound. How is this 24 comparable to this? And how can you get dry? Yes, it's not comparable. Because here we just use sound, but I guess in real life, better to have it dry. Does it work? No, it doesn't. Now I put it back to the same mode. Here? Yeah, it's, uh, it's here. Right? And then we need, like, but it doesn't want to let me do so it. Like now I took it out with the, if I put it back. Just it's just an illusion, we don't know so much. And I don't know why Plastic. it doesn't want to activate it. <laughs> it just doesn't want to. Is it to gain breath? Yeah. So we just come up with the numbers, or do we do, like, flow no, of like water it. and energy? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is on the like presenter mode. Mm -hmm. 
No. So, I think it's this template. It's the color of this template. No, I don't know. I didn't. But well, it's okay. It doesn't matter. It's just useful, but it's uh, mm -hmm. okay. So I put it back to. Let's see if we get a uh, similar curves. Did you get something like that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did 24 types. Yes, yeah, that's fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> okay, but you, you got it. <coughs> then we go to the next example. And now I don't give you the functional unit. I would like you to decide one by yourself, figure out. Mm -hmm. It's the case of two paints. Uh, one long duration paint, so it lasts 20 years, and it covers a surface. Yeah, so for it, the density is like with 0 0.3 kilogram, you can cover a square meter of wall. And the case B is a shorter, shorter duration paint, so it only lasts 10 years, and it covers the same area of the wall. Uh, what could be a functional unit? And once you define your functional unit, what could be the reference flow? Quality, quantity, duration. How much, how long, how well? To have one square meter painted during 20 years. So it covers the wall. Maybe you have to remove the residual paint and send and fix it. Mm -hmm. Those are so that's a good thing. So we only have to so take one plus maybe something else. <laughs> we don't know. But normally you really need to take it. Would that be a difference between yeah, both? So, but in here you keep it simple to the quality of the painting for the cleaning and the aspect. So maybe you use some robots, yeah, and then we need electricity. Or like a rover. Yeah. <laughs> 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 at least 
Sorry. So let's see if you get uh, something similar. Yes. yes. So here I go. Providing 100 square meter of painted wall with an opacity of 98%, so that's the quality of it, uh, for 20 years. And then, of course, yeah, this one is twice as much. <laughs> Did you have something similar with your functional unit? Yes, but we have just um, 10 square meters. Yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Another example, uh, a very classic one. So the case of drinking hot drinks at work. Uh, but here, assuming uh, that work is 365 a day, <laughs> it's not France. <laughs> I know, they would be strike. <laughs> but let's say you want to produce 200 milliliter of hot beverage three times a day for 365 uh, days. Uh, the first case is this plastic cup, I think we have it over there. Uh, and the second case is a ceramic mug, and that's going to be actually our case today with Simapool. Um, one that you, yeah, you can reuse. Uh, I don't say more this time, so I let you define the constraint that you could have, and what could be your final reference flow in these two cases. So one year, it's uh, one year, fourteen. So, so three days. So we only more than one. You said that we only need one cup. One cup. At least, at least one year. Let's think okay. about the ceremony. Okay. Let's Mag focus on yes, one year. <laughs> at least one year. We keep the cup and we wash. So, so here we just need one. The one nine five cups and here. We need one cup, but we need one thousand ninety five washings. Okay. If we walk, if we are very. Like and then the cup we need is. Maybe we wash it there. Mm. Wash it there. Yeah. 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 Let's face yeah. it. Let's face it. Yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. it depends on the uh, <laughs> beverage. Range. If the beverage range can be. Yeah. Three times a day uh, for my tea. Uh, not wash it. Uh, let's let's define a range. Or sometimes we drink so the water. We wash it with. Yes. yes. We can we can <laughs> define a range. At least once. 
in a day do three times a day oh. so 365 do oh, okay. 195 washings yeah 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 i guess this one <laughs> in one year yeah. so yeah can be less like if a person wash <laughs> should never rush <laughs> <laughs> So what, what kind of uh, constraint uh, did you discuss for the plastic uh, single use? That you, use, you only use it once? Yes. Yeah. Once? Okay. So sometimes some people keep it. Yeah. Or it could be, uh, and sometimes I, I, I have done that, uh, you know it's uh, so tiny but the, the beverage is so hot so then people yeah, actually yeah. take two instead of uh, only one. Yes. 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 So, uh, uh, that you need to investigate in your system because it's a consequence. You don't need one cover, <laughs> but two. <laughs> yeah. um, for the ceramic mug, what kind of constraint did you discuss? What the washing, the break. The washing, Wash yeah. Breaking. Breaking. So how long it lasts? The last oh, lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That's very good. Very good. Uh, so. Yes, so that's what I got. Okay, you use it only yeah. once per year, uh -huh. and here yes. um, I decided a lifetime. Four years. Yes, but uh, that was just to make it yes. <laughs> <laughs> even number. Yes. But you, yeah. Well, it's forty years for us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So and then uh, you decide if you wash it, and I heard you exactly having this discussion. Do you wash it after each use, or once a day, or even once a week? Uh, here, there's no right or bad answer. You need to understand your system. What happened? Then you put these constraints in places, and then uh, these are the different flows you need to supply your service. Mm -hmm. So in one case, there's also washing, but there's only here you have. Yeah, 1,095 units, here you have only 0 0.25 unit of your problem. Any questions? I mean, now there's no right or wrong answer because we are learning the method, but when in the real application, these assumptions are very critical. Well, exactly. And this is why I say that this uh, golden scope is the most important part of your LCA. <laughs> because if you make uh, these assumptions or that you don't take enough time to consider what is your system, mm. then your answer is so useless. I mean, the, this, for example, is a, good, uh, is a good thing to think of. Okay, people, what, what will happen when you put it in place or if you're studying a disposal yeah, a machine like this one? Mm. You need to really have a good understanding. Okay, will people take only one cup or two? Or do mm. I force them to take only one cup because the cup is coming you know, out oh, of the yeah. machine? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Yes. Um, so to get started and to know what matters, <laughs> what you consider, what you don't consider, we do what we call a process flow diagram. So that might speak to the process engineers among you. Uh, there are some conventions, they are not from the ISO standard, but they are from what we see in many LCAs, so I'll present them. Uh, when we draw it, so as we say, it's cradled to Great. So we have first uh, input from nature, and not everybody do that. Huh? That's something a bit personal, even. But when it comes from nature, we put this electricity sign and connect it to the ground. Uh, mm -hmm. exactly. um, so, for instance, you'd have okay oil extraction. Then you have a flow. It could be some gigajoule uh, of oil. Then you have a process, for instance, refining, and we put process in box. Process in box and flows like your gigajoule of oil on an arrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then out of your process, you have your main product. So say in this case, we are interested in producing diesel, so we can supply uh, transport demand. Uh, but you also have some co-product, as we said, and then you need to represent them as well. And if you further refine them or process them, so again, a process box. Uh, and it may avoid something. So in that example here, I put, okay, if you produce electricity with your co-product, then it's electricity you will not need from somewhere else. And that you can put in a dotted uh, line to show it's avoided. Okay. <coughs> so you do this for the system that you are assessing and also for the reference. 
So what would have happened otherwise? You do that for each finally, of your systems. So that really helps you to see, OK, what I consider, what I don't consider. But we, again, will make some uh, exercises on this. Did you hear about this? Consequential or attributional LCA? It's the big divide in the LCA community. Um, we can say there are two schools, but I wouldn't even say religions <laughs> now, because it, it really takes proportion. And there's this um, consequential, and there's this one on attributional. Uh, but are, this, these two words are not in the ISO standard. Uh, but it's, yeah, it illustrates two different variants. Uh, especially of dealing with uh, multifunctionality. As we said earlier, there are secondary products. Uh, and then how do you account for them? That has created big divide. Uh, but to capture these, I uh, will make you do a case and practice how to draw a process flow diagram. So uh, you keep your team. And the case, uh, so. Uh, there's a lot of biodiesel today <laughs> in my cases. <laughs> this is such a classic. Uh, and th in this case, we make biodiesel from animal fat. Mm -hmm. And this, again, uh, is done today. It exists. So where you process the, the pig uh, for the meat, mm -hmm. but you also can get the fat out. And there's a company, again, it's a case from Denmark, where they will use this fat, uh, process it, and produce uh, biodiesel. Uh, here, to simplify it, let's consider that this esterification, esterification process is only one box. <laughs> one, uh, let's make it simple. And say that the functional unit is that we want to supply 10 kilometers of transportation in a conventional five-seat passenger car in Europe with a certain type of engine. Uh, for doing that, we need, uh, now I, we can just use these fixed flows, so A, make it sure of biodiesel. For the esterification process, you need pig fat, B megajoule, and you need some other inputs, yeah, methanol, for instance, some energy, but now let's consider them as other. Just uh, you will have some co-products, mm -hmm. uh, and then we make it simple again, some glycerin, C megajoule, it can be used for heat, uh, distillation residue, E megajoule, it also can be used for heat, and then the catalyst residue, uh, G megajoule, and it's rich in potassium, so it could be used in agriculture. And mm. uh, now I would like you to draw the process flow diagram, which process you would consider. And again, the esterification process is just one box, simple, no fruit treatment, or just one box. Okay. So in seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a box. Since there is just external yes. yeah. 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 the yeah. the yeah. the yeah. or the yeah. 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 Or, um, yes, we have always a process of making. Yeah, but but we, we so always start from nature. Yeah. Hmm? Okay, so we do. Maybe the know? first box would be the nature, no. would be the animal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then the, let's say, meat production. Mm -hmm. And produce mm -hmm. its fat. Meat. meat. Yeah. Okay, we yes. consider mm -hmm. meat or not. And then it's not an actual it's actually Yeah, well, I think it depends on whether we think that we can um, see the slide like four or not. Because <laughs> 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 it was so fast. <laughs> this? Yeah. Process.
Would you like to draw it on the board when we get the panel? Uh, one of you? <laughs> the artist? Yeah. <laughs> the artist. Yeah, I guess you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's not really standard, the standard way. But <laughs> <laughs> Only the processes, they are represented in boxes. Yeah. And the, and the flows in the arrow. Okay. And what was the dot line? Avoided. Avoided process. Yeah. OK. So, so we, we, we should find maybe arrow here, because we avoid the uh, no. You put an arrow then on top of it. Oh yes, for the both. But I don't think we, we can huh? provide all like the same. For example, we three C megas on the arrow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, right. Right. Supplemental. Oh, okay, yeah. if it's a C megas, we don't know. Yeah. It's practically partly avoided. So that's okay, not completely avoided. Not completely avoided. Maybe these are some, yeah. Hi. Yeah, let's come here. Yeah, so maybe we can do processing yeah, yeah. Partly. Ah, agriculture. Which will be a process. And, and yeah, yeah. Agriculture will be a process. Okay. Thank you. And this. You have to push here. This you need to. Okay. 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 So Maila, you want to? Catalyst. So the catalyst goes Are you making some know. changes? Nature. I chose this. Some Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay, okay. No, it's okay. Yeah. Good. Also, need land water. Seats. But this is very long. If we yeah, want to be from the cradle, cradle, the real yeah. cradle, you have to yeah, see, but just. Something like that. <laughs> nature. Mm -hmm. Nature gives. Yeah. Nature uh, gives. Land and water. Land, mm -hmm. water, seats. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want yeah. To and then from the water, we can. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> either, either ah, yeah, so I see the that's true. Or agriculture. Yeah, yeah. agriculture comes food. And agriculture food. gives food. I mean, it's either processed food or mm -hmm. no? No, agriculture, like food is from agriculture. It's very cheap. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's so a food for animals and food for animals. Yeah, so, <laughs> agriculture <laughs> gives food. And then here this recipe, recipe, the catalyst. They were done, but yeah, <laughs> some final changes. So, okay. so I decided to add the other team. <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry. Okay. Not on me. We were not finished. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. If they can see it. We can, we can. Oh, you can see? Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's um, 
<laughs> what you were asked. <laughs> um, This was catalyst and distillation uh, residue was the, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's the That's distillation. Uh, distillation residue, and, and the, the next one paper. is catalyst. And yeah, the first one is distillation. I don't know. I, I don't know that. No, it's okay. It's, it's like this. Oh, the agriculture is for the cattle. Water. This one. Yeah. Okay. Like this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And it produces meat and. Does team number one have something similar to team number two? Not oh, you have a bit of difference. Um, we have some, some steps. We have some steps. Yeah, yeah, before. Before. What, what, is the, what is different? Um, we, from, from nature, we started with the agriculture process. Ag agriculture. Yes, mm -hmm. and from agriculture we, we produce food, mm -hmm. and the food is used for the farming. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. like this. And then uh, yes, from so. the farming, um, there's another process with, which is the slaughterhouse, uh, slaughter slaughter like the meat production. Yeah. Slaughtering, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, which produces uh, meat uh, and uh, fat. And the fat will be then the input of the esterification process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I uh, think. Agricultural, agricultural use, so come back to uh, agricultural. Uh, agricultural the residues come back to agriculture. Yeah, the, the, okay. the catalyst uh, residue. Can go back yes to the agriculture process. And then, yes. Okay. Do you agree with the yeah, question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We forgot to do that again. No, I don't agree because I thought pig fat is just the byproduct that is going to be wasted. So do we really have to consider the pig process? Because it will be in the reference. Okay, but I'm not sure I get you because you consider pig farming. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, I'm also not sure about it. Maybe we should just go say that the mega jewel of pig fat. So Sunia is saying that we should I would forget this having. part and get started by this, be mega jewel of pig fat. Let's see. I didn't discuss it with you. But where is the creative? So how do you define it when you consider it as waste? I mean, I guess you could do all this, but I thought that it would be the same in the reference anyways. Whatever the reference would be. Absolutely. Okay. You consider that there will always be uh, big fat. You will always be able to use big fat. Yeah. 
there will be agriculture and slaughterhouse, and then that amount will be the same regardless of what, what the pig fat is used for. What this diagram is saying, so now we put it in the back, agriculture, so that's pig farming. Mm -hmm. I think if we have like a diagrams for each unit, yeah, we can use. It should never be dependent upon data. First, you need to understand what happened, and then mm -hmm. get the data or estimate, mm -hmm. not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, you yeah, may make <laughs> significant mistakes. But always first try to really capture what happened. Mm -hmm. um, what this system is saying here, it's saying that if we want to have, this is for what we want, right? We want to have this biodiesel. That's what we want here to produce transport. So if we want more biodiesel to be produced, what this system is saying is that we are going to produce, we will need more fat. And to have more fat, we need to produce more pig. Mm -hmm. Are we going to produce more pig because we want biodiesel? Mm -hmm. I want to say no. <laughs> Why do farmers produce pig? <laughs> what is their market? Uh, it's the meat, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, at least today, only the price of the, the fat becomes so high that uh, they, yeah. they, they shift their perspective. But uh, pigs are produced uh, for producing meat. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the point that Sonia was raising is valid. This is just the fat is the input to start with. But okay. we will never produce more. If we want more biodiesel, we will never start to produce more pig <laughs> okay. uh, because of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that therefore, it doesn't make sense to consider the pig farming. And these are very, very important and so actual decision. I was at the Ministry of Environment last Friday. And then one advisor to the minister, she asked me, oh, in your opinion, the residue from palm oil, is it a residue or not? Mm. And my answer was exactly that. I said, if you want to produce, uh, so they want to use it for um, bio-based fuels, if you want to produce more of that fuel, are you going to produce more of the palm bunches? Mm. No, it's produced for oil. Then I said, then it's a residue. Yeah. Okay. So this is, um, so here, you're not going to produce more pig, so it starts by the, the pig fat. Because so. it is waste and waste, that is the reason? It's a waste. It's exactly. it, cannot, it cannot react to a change in the demand because yeah, exactly it's a, it's a waste. So. so even though you want more of that, you're never going to make more of that. It's mm -hmm. a, it's the byproduct of another activity. Okay. So that's why we don't include uh, this stage here. Yeah. Okay. But you should do a sensitivity analysis. You need to consider the whole process. The, the pig farming? Yeah. So if you do that, you... But, but because I, in this case, I fix the production of pig. But I, I don't know. I am not sure why we have not to consider the first step. The only reason why you would consider the pig farming, it would be uh, that uh, you would say, OK, now the price for this is so high. So pig farmers are actually interested to produce pig for the fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. It's the same as the case I had in, uh, in Paris last week. Uh, Greenpeace mm -hmm. says that it's not a residue, this, uh, uh, if, uh, how is it called, uh, this residue from the, um, the palm oil, mm -hmm. uh, because they think that uh, if we start to demand more of that in the future for producing biofuels, then we will actually produce the fruit um, oil bunches for the residue, not for the oil. Yeah, if this happens, this is right. But this is not today what drives this to be produced at the first place. Yeah, in this case here, it's for the meat. So that's why we don't include it. Okay. Okay. And one other thing I cannot uh, see on this, you produce, oh yeah, okay, you produce heat. This heat is used here. We can use it. If the process is heated. But then? Um, the, the there's the an avoided process. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then this, this um, well, let's say that this heat is, uh, is given to the grid to make it easier. And then 
um, this amount produced up in the grid on the grid doesn't need to be produced anymore. Here, this is just one process demanding mm. uh, heat from the well, mm. um, Yes, same for that. So, if you use these agricultural residues, then it means that you don't need uh, to have these produced elsewhere. So, potassium doesn't need to be produced from mineral fertilizer. So, yes, but here we do not consider the interest of any particular use for the for our process. It can be used for this process, it can be used for another process. Uh, what is important is to understand how it's used mm -hmm. and what would have been used instead. So, here you say it's used there for feed that would feed these pigs. Okay, but then what, what kind of uh, potassium would have been applied there? This is the key question. Uh, it's a simple example, but just to show you, it's not easy. No, There's a lot of questions <laughs> that will come into play. Uh, yes. And there's one more thing, and it's this uh, here. So we say that we have the fat, but just as the straw, now it's considered as a free lunch. It comes for free. But if the fat would not be used here, the fat is there, what would happen with it? Yeah, it's a high calorific value. It could be burned to produce heat, the heat that we don't need to produce anymore for. It could be used for chemistry. It could be used. For other kind of chemistry. Yeah, lipstick. Yes, it could be, yeah. So that avoided use uh, it should be uh, considered as well. So just a uh, one hint is typically there's nothing left alone except the last services. Everything is connected. <laughs> Any questions? I come back to this case of, um, oh yeah, you don't see the slide. <laughs> uh, we come back to this case of attributional and consequential. I think this here is, a, is good anyway now I can use. If you uh, use um, what we call consequential LCA, you will end up with a diagram like this. Uh, uh, the, the, I will actually show you my version. <laughs> but if you use the attributional, then that's when people may include the pig farming at the first place. So they will try to see, okay, what is the whole, you know, to decompose the whole life cycle. And then they will say, okay, esterification process, we know that this emits uh, 10 kilograms of CO2. Uh, and then how do we split this 10 kilograms of, uh, of CO2 between these different products? Because this is my interest. But it's not fair to say that the, this whole 10 of kilogram of CO2 emission should go to that because there's also some other product. So sometimes uh, you might find some people saying, okay, but they have different type of energy value. Uh, so this one is zero, so there's no emission going to that. Uh, this one is uh, maybe, um, I don't know, it's four megajoule. This is uh, six, uh, well, this is uh, two. And this is four, so then it would be uh, here. It's dark because it's ten. I took yeah. So then we would have four here. Uh, I don't remember what I said. Two, Two and four. four. Yeah. Um, some other people might say, nah, but let's do it by uh, by mass instead. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is likely to be heavier, and we'll take maybe eight instead, uh, and then one and one. Well, let's say the system is zero. <laughs> uh, you could do it by, uh, by market value, by money. Uh, so then again, maybe this would be 10. So according to the rule that you would choose, mm -hmm. you will get a very different answer. Mm -hmm. And there has been a lot of criticism, and I'll see on that, because they say, well, this is misleading. I, I asked this consultant to make the LCA, I got that result. This other consultant took different allocation rule and got a completely different result. What should I do? What should I understand? Um, and this is true. <laughs> uh, this is so arbitrary. 
And we were doing that at the beginning of LCA, but since uh, we became more clever with experience, uh, there's a new approach that has been considered. It, it's called system expansion. And it's to consider what will happen to this glycerin, just as we did. Oh, it's used for heat. OK, so that heat doesn't need to be supplied anymore in, in the system. Mm -hmm. What would happen to these catalysts? Oh, it's used for agriculture. So the potassium there doesn't need to be used anymore. So that is called system expansion. Consider how each of these co-products would be used, and then just consider that use in your system. Um, and then the second thing is what we call ma marginal data versus average data. So if you have an electricity process, uh, the average data would be to look, OK, we are in France. The electricity in France is how much nuclear? 70. 70. 70%, OK, 70% nuclear. Then we have uh, still a tiny bit of coal. So I don't know, maybe 10 percent <laughs> of coal, natural gas, and then you make the mix, you know, according to this picture of the system that you're taking today. Uh, while the marginal data would be, okay, if we want m one more megawatt of electricity, what are the suppliers that will react? So, for example, when you have uh, hydropower in the system. This is not really likely to react because the amount of uh, dam that we have, we can't really build more. I mean, there are some countries where they are still building s some dams. There's been a big one in China. But here in Europe, everything, all the lakes that where we could have dams, we have used them. So we can't, it's not going to react if we want more. So what can react? And this is what you have to think. What can react to a change in the demand? This would be your marginal data. So these are the two big differences between what is called attributional and what is called consequential. The system expansion for consequential versus use of allocation for attributional, and the marginal data for consequential versus the use of this average or picture, you know, of today data for attributional. I will put this back. I try not to use these two words today, but I rather just say that my LCA is done with system expansion and use of marginal data. So I don't make anyone unhappy <laughs> in this way. And the reason it's, it's in part because of the, uh, how to say, founder of this consequential approach, uh, it has been pushed in a very, yeah, it's just a human issue, I think it was. People were really um, arrogant a bit, and so some other people felt criticized on how they were doing things, and then, yeah, it's a big mess. Uh, yes, so in consequential SC, as I said, the system that we were looking at could be modeled uh, like this. It's in two steps. So first, the pig fat, the certification. We have our different products. We have our main service on the top. Uh, yeah, and then we have the use of our different uh, co-products. And it avoids something. So here, the heat is avoided from marginal heat source. And the potassium is avoided from marginal source. And in the second step, uh, the pig fat, uh, yeah, let's say it would have been burned otherwise, so, um, so we don't do that anymore, so we need to burn the marginal fuel. So this is what I would have made. Uh, uh, as I said, and that's very funny, when I make this exercise, uh, and now when people get it and I say, okay, draw me the consequential and draw me the attributional, everyone draw the same consequential, but then I have many version of attributional, <laughs> <laughs> very different uh, version, typically. Uh, yeah, that could be one way of doing it. So uh, just as we were doing earlier, uh, including uh, the farming and the meat, uh, but then all the time not considering what happened with the co-product, but just allocating the emissions to the different um, co-products. But sometimes you will find that uh, sometimes the, uh, like in the case of uh, 
I saw some consequential sometimes, uh, some attributional, sorry. They would consider that, sometimes not. Um, yes. So this is not as part of the standard, uh, what is attributional, what is consequential, but I call it how do you model your system properly. <laughs> so the, the aim, I mean, why do we do LC? It's to support decision and we want to prevent the consequences of uh, bad decision to be taken or unforeseen consequences. This is what we're trying to do. So the, this is why uh, this approach here makes more sense. Because you're really trying to capture the system and what happened. And even though you don't know, you can take sensitivity analysis. So you don't know that this array will be used in the border for heat. Maybe it's used for something else. If you're not sure, uh, then test it. Make a sensitivity analysis. OK, what is if it's used for that, then what happened? How does it change my result? Uh, so consequential RSE. The logic is, what are the consequences of implementing system A instead of system B, as we're saying? And uh, that means more A is produced. So therefore, if we invested in, as we were, I was saying earlier, in incineration, we have incineration for 40 years. What do we replace uh, in 40 years? So we have our system. Uh, let's say, yeah, we're looking at the energy. Uh, we have different alternatives, bio-based or fossil-based. We make our LCA, we conclude, let's say biobase is better. Decision maker take that, they take a decision, they say okay, then let's make sure we have biobase, let's make some incentives. Uh, so, so there's investment in biobase systems. And that's gonna create a difference in the in the world. And that difference is exactly what we're trying to capture in the LCA. Uh, we saw that earlier, so simple representation of LCA with your material production. There's different materials, um, the product manufacturer, and then it, it uh, you signal out here into your product that you're going to use. So you might need some electricity input here. Uh, and at the end, the disposal, and it can go in the different stream as we saw with the light bulb. The aluminum can go there, the, the glass can go another way. But systems are a bit more complex <laughs> than this, <laughs> as we saw. So uh, we could have some secondary services. Uh, bless you. As we said, like the free heat we get from the projector is one example. Mm -hmm. All these co-products was another example. So this we need to, to consider. And then they replace something, as we just saw. So this we also need to consider. Uh, yes, and even more complex, <laughs> because then what is it that you replace? Yeah, you can have several choices. Uh, and then we often say, okay, or what is it uh, which uh, we, we were saying earlier with the potassium, okay, we replace a fertilizer source, but which one? Uh, you may have several suppliers, which one do you select? And then we say, select the one that reacts to a change in demand. Mm -hmm. The one that would react to a change in demand, always. So this is the formula of consequential LCA, to be or not to be. <laughs> uh, so it's really what is the difference, what environmental yeah, difference does it make between this product being there or not being there? Uh, and as one of the former students put it, uh, it's, the, it's like the Archimedes. So yeah, putting in the bath and then the water that comes out, that's our interest. Mm -hmm. Um, it can be more than one, that's true for the electricity case. Uh, one example there could be uh, the Nordic market. So there were a company claiming that, uh, oh, uh, uh, 
Uh, we supply our window frame with 100% uh, renewable electricity coming from the hydropower. Yes, but if you ask more of these window frames, what happens? In Norway, they're not going to put more dams, there's no space for that. Mm -hmm. So what happened, it was the coal power plant from Denmark that were reacting. Yeah, because the EU can supply more of that easily. So, um, so then it <laughs> this green certificate had no value. <laughs> <really>. <laughs> um, so this is one example. But uh, in this case of electricity, it can be, for example, uh, if you have wind power and so solar power, it cannot win on demand. Or it cannot also, you cannot have sun on demand. Uh, but there can be some uh, electricity storage, uh, perhaps capacity in your system. So it can be a mix of different sources. I mean, it was for fertilizer if you said, oh, we we replace this fertilizer from the catalyst residue, that yeah. A fertilizer 30% will be fertilizer that because if that's the market share... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what you would look at. I mean, that's true, it's not necessarily one. Potassium is not a good idea, a good case because this is K2 all the time. <laughs> but uh, if you look at nitrogen, then uh, there's a more bigger market. There's urea. There is. It also depends when you are in the world. But what we typically do is that then we look at the statistic, and we look at uh, the change from one year to another. What is the delta? So we look at which of these different fertilizer uh, had changed. Uh, so in these different years, so we can see uh, the one that has the bigger delta. It doesn't mean that it's the, the bigger capacity, but it means which one had really reacted to the changes in So the one that's more expensive might get affected more, for example? Precisely, precisely. If it's expensive, then you will, it's not going to be the one reacting, but there might be one that it's easy to put uh, on the market easily. Um, so, in a nutshell, as I said, system expansion to handle multifunctionality. We track the consequences of demand change. We identify which products are replaced on the market by arising co-products. If it's constrained, like in the case of a waste, uh, we have to look what service is replaced. Mm -hmm. Waste is one case, but another case is land. So if you demand land for growing a crop for biofuels to stay in this uh, area, then uh, this land was perhaps used before for something else. So it's not, it's not there anymore for that. Uh, system boundary, so yes, uh, we only include what is affected uh, by a change uh, in the demand for the product for which we make our LCA. Again, when do we stop? So when do we stop you know, expanding the system? <laughs> and it's at the point where consequences become so small or the uncertainty so large that further expansion will not yield any significant information for the decision to support. Uh, two key expansion cases, yeah, co-product and constrained resource, as we say, or so-called counterfactual. Um, Yes, so consequential LCA use on the marginal data. Um, I think that I've said many times already, so what reacts to a change in demand? <laughs> but we um, will have some examples. So, it's again a case of fuels because we have many, <laughs> so that's going to be a bit of topic today. Here, uh, the case is to use a uh, rapeseed, so canola, mm -hmm. uh, to make uh, biodiesel. So you have uh, arable land uh, that is used to cultivate the rape, uh, then you process it, you get straw, and then you get uh, uh, cake, yeah? mm -hmm. and then you get the oil, uh, there's the certification process again, yeah, there, there's a glycerin co-product, you have your biodiesel, and then you can supply your driving uh, service. Uh, we didn't discuss it much, but uh, of course this driving otherwise would have been supplied by a diesel, fossil diesel, so the ore and then you don't need this refining. Uh, do you put it there or do you put it as a separate alternative? 
This is often a question I get. I would recommend, now here I put it here just to show that some do like that. So it, it means that you would present your result all in one. But I would recommend that you put your alternative separately. It's much easier for communicating. So what do you think about this system? Alternative for the main problem. Uh, I mean, this is what you're interested in, and then you're studying biodiesel. But biodiesel here replaces normal diesel. So this normal diesel, I would recommend you don't put it as an avoided, but you put it as one system, and then you compare the impact of two next to each other. Okay. Um, do you think this is a correct process for diagram? But for the other side <coughs> products, we need to avoid the products on the diagram, right? The glycerin. Where? Well, glycerin. Yeah. Whatever that replaces. Okay, so, so there's something missing there, yeah. what, what happened with these. So again, huh? a little hint, you should never see something alone like that lying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yes, uh, it should uh, look a little more like that. So uh, you should see what happened with these. And uh, then the arable land, uh, the same. Something uh, would have been done with that land. So you may have cultivated something, and if you would, then it would have produced a food that you mm -hmm. no longer have. So where is that going to be produced? Mm -hmm. uh, you need to take into account. That's where it involved the so-called land use change or indirect land use change processes. Uh, yes, and just to show you an example of how complicated <laughs> it can get. So for example, uh, the rapeseed cake, let's focus on that. So it could be used for animal uh, fodder uh, as a source of protein, yeah? So, um, but that uh, oh. protein, yeah. <laughs> so now if you, you, you produce this biodiesel, so okay, you have the, ra the rapeseed cake that is used for animal protein, so it means that you don't need to produce the protein uh, from the marginal protein, and what is it that reacts when we have an increased protein demand? It's typically soybean. Mm -hmm. uh, so it means that you won't produce soybean anymore. Uh, and, but the problem with soybean is that it doesn't only produce mm -hmm. the soybean meal that we are interested in, but it also produces oil. And that oil you don't have then anymore. So. It's good. <laughs> what is going? To, do you have less oil in the market? What is going to react? Well, palm oil is typically in the oil market, the one that is reacting to a change in demand. So you don't have the soybean oil anymore, so palm oil is going to react. But as we were discussing earlier, again, it's not produced alone. It's produced together with palm meal, mm -hmm. uh, which itself uh, is a source of protein and carbohydrate. So you induce a little more of that in your system. And yeah, yeah, here to make it easy, <laughs> I just it there. It's a source of carbohydrate. It's going to replace um, a source of carbohydrate for animal feed. And that uh, typically is barley that is the one reacting to a change of demand. So you're going to um, have a barley production that is not going to be demanded anymore. And that's where we stop because it's produced on its own. <laughs> it's a single product. So it ends that you have an avoided uh, body production. So that's what we mean by system expansion. Okay. Uh, additional readings I uh, would provide you uh, on this uh, specifically as a PDF package. There's a link at the end actually, and that there are some that are not online, but I have the PDF. Uh, I suggest we don't take a break, <laughs> <laughs> if that's fine for you, but we stop around 12. Okay. So we covered that golden scope, that's a big phase of LCA. Uh, now let's go to the inventory. That's uh, the getting the data. Hmm. Yeah, and then we have to be very careful not to become that, <laughs> which I often become. Uh, but uh, trying to... Um, not, don't be afraid to make hypotheses sometime and, and shortcut 
and then you test it and you will see and you will see oh that was very sensitive or I need a better data but sometimes we spend a lot of energy trying to get very good data on processes that are not important mm -hmm. so um, so in the first iteration don't be afraid note it uh, this is rough but don't be afraid to get started so you will find later otherwise it can take you 10 years <laughs> to make an LCA there's typically two types of data that will be uh, distinguished. There's the foreground data, and these are data related to your own system. And there's a the background data. This would be data uh, like if you have a system, again, on the biodiesel, but there are fertilizer involved, but you're not producing fertilizer, so it comes as a background data. Or, for example, the electricity would also be a background data. You need it but it, your system is not about that. Uh, and for these background data, we are very lucky that there is something, uh, there's different life cycle inventory databases that exist. One of the leading ones is a convent, it's transparent. Everything is documented and we can retrieve the data from there. Uh, yeah, and for the foreground data, how do you get this data? Flow. Yeah, it's your flow, exactly. What do you get it when you make LCA? Experiments, literature. Experiments, yeah. Simulation, yes, that's a, that's a very good, well, yeah, it's a good way to, especially when it's a new process, yeah. you have no idea. I put a phone there, mm. don't be afraid. <laughs> and if it's produced, <laughs> call the people doing it. You know, if you're not sure, I did it with a student here. Uh, call them and they know. Oh, how to? Oh, yes, it's used for that because we sell it, and they tell you why because the market is there. The, yeah, if if it's produced by somebody, they know why they do it. <laughs> but if it's scientific studies, I guess they're more eager mm -hmm. to share. But if it's like the company data, it's it depends what data you ask for. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, the, the worst that happens, you get to know. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yes. So that don't really don't hesitate, yeah, all these manufacturing data sheets. Um, yeah, of course, scientific study. And we don't rely on one uh, study, but we make uh, a compilation of many. You can make estimation. Uh, that's a methodology, not just a guess like that, but mm -hmm. uh, based on stoichiometry, and there's a different way where, where we can estimate what we, when we don't know. Uh, yeah, here are some tools, well, okay, Eurostat, you know, the FAO uh, for the fertilizer, there's International Fertilizer uh, Association, the World Bank very often has very good data. Uh, yeah, all warden data, I don't know if you know that, it's uh, very useful also for statistics from different uh, matters, very, very useful. Um, CIMACO has a listserv. And this, it's a forum where people can ask questions when they have some, and some other will answer or not. <laughs> but it's a, yeah, it's a good way to, uh, if you have any questions or if you're looking for jobs, some jobs are advertised there. Uh, I don't know if you are on it. Yeah, I, I would recommend, yeah, I've put the link there so um, that you're there. It's a very, you don't need to be active and you can just receive the email, but don't provide I would recommend you don't provide your main email, but the side one, because they tend to be a lot of uh, mm -hmm. mails, yeah. Or you had them in the folder. Uh, the PEF I was talking about earlier, with the data for the shampoo and these different products that have been selected. Uh, well, the environmental footprint method, IPCC. They have a lot of good estimation methodology for, mm -hmm. of course, greenhouse gases mostly. Uh, yeah, well, for bioeconomy, which is my interest, the GRC has a catalog of data as well. So, these are examples. Uh, there's a lot of, of information out there. Uh, for the inventory analysis, yes, when it comes to the background, uh, the equipment database, it's not the only one, but it's the main one. Uh, it's uh, um, of course, uh, it's not free, so you need to pay for it. Uh, but uh, it's transparent, so it's all documented. 
Uh, it has yeah, more than 2,500 industrial process. It's always updated. Uh, and then these are the sectors that are covered. Energy, transport, building materials, chemical, washing agents, paper, and cardboard, agriculture, and waste management. Uh, the databases uh, describe all that uh, linked. We will play with it when we have the Simapro uh, exercise in the afternoon. Um, <clears throat> yes, if you go on the website of Equinvent, and uh, I will try to show you uh, when we are in the computer room, then uh, you typically have um, access, a login to the database when you purchase Simapro. Uh, so yeah, you can put your username, your, your, your password, and then you will get something like that where you can retrieve the PDF of specific processes if you want to. So you can do that if you don't have a LC software like Simapro, or it can be OpenLC. Or then you can just uh, take take it as a PDF uh, document. There is other uh, lifecycle inventory databases, not just Equinvent. So here are some of them. Gabi uh, is the main competitor. They make by ThinkStep. Uh, Agri Footprint is made by a company in the Netherlands, now the name is coming out of my mind. They provide the special well, agricultural data, <laughs> as the name says. Uh, the French one, Agribalise. Uh, yeah, there are a few. Oh, yeah. So would it be possible to mix and match the database? Yeah, uh, it, well, when you use Simapro, then there is different databases that are available. You can tick all of them or untick. So when do you use this? No, you typically you can see which processes are there, and then if, if it, the process is documented by many, then you can compare and take the one that seems to be the best quality. Or sometimes you don't like any, but you take inspiration from what is there, and then you modify it. That's also possible. When you make a life cycle inventory, um, you really need to document everything. and. If do it on spot for yourself because you forget. There's so much data about so many things that uh, you, it's easy to forget. Uh, that's an example here documenting, it was a LC about manure management. And here the manure was separated into a liquid and a solid. And that was the LCA for storing the, yeah, storing the liquid fraction. Uh, you don't need to do like that, but here, yeah, I put the reference. So I was comparing the <coughs> manual that is not treated. So that was uh, scenario A. And that scenario F was this uh, storage of just the liquid fraction. When I s have my manure and I separate it in the liquid, I get 651.9, <laughs> very precise, kilogram of liquid, and the rest as a solid out of 1,000 kilograms. But I always put my process for a unit. Uh, so in this case, a, a ton, so 1,000 kilogram. It's much easier like that than putting it for an odd number like that. So I would recommend you always document your process for one or for a ton of something or kilogram of something. And uh, so you have, so for one ton of liquid to be stored, um, I have some energy consumption. Okay, I have a little more in the output because there's going to be rainwater. It's not covered storage. Uh, and then I'm going to have some emissions. And then uh, you document it. And here you explain how, on base, on which hypothesis this is made. Uh, okay, it goes. There's also emissions to uh, water. Uh, it goes here, uh, but we don't see it here. But this is a uh, how you should make that, and you make it in an Excel file. So it's always linked. So if you change something, then it's all adjusted automatically. Typically what I would do, uh, one, uh, so I take an Excel file, each tab is a process, mm -hmm. and then I, I would do these um, life cycle inventory of each of the process, and at the end, I put it together according to my process for diagram. So how much mm -hmm. of each of these to fulfill my functional unit. So that 
could be seen as a template, and I give the reference at the end. When you deal with organic uh, substances, it's not so bad with uh, inorganic, but with organic, uh, you have the problem that you have emissions of carbon, <laughs> and therefore uh, you need to take this into account. You always need to make your mass balances because the the pool that you have uh, for emitting will not be the same at the beginning and at the end of the process for the next stage. So if we take it there with that example of uh, okay, so here you produce biogas, uh, then you get uh, from the you get the gas, but you also get the digestate. And then here, this digestate was the one to be separated in a liquid and a solid. Um, and then, yeah, so this take the case of the storage of the, of the solid here. So before uh, the storage, you have, OK, for one ton of solid, you have uh, that much dry matter, that much nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Then during the storage, you lose substances. You lose dry matter, you lose nitrogen, and you have to document and you lose carbon. As CO2, as methane, you have to document it. Uh, and therefore, uh, you, the composition of it changes. And for the next stage, it has this uh, potential for emission. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, always keep track of your substance. So sometimes people will just say, oh, this is five kilograms of CO2. Oh, this is four, but <laughs> is it possible to emit four? Uh, first of all, you can't do it like that. You really need to do it on a mass balance uh, mm -hmm. point of view. And that's really where you spend time. So uh, ISO standard uh, has some requirement for the inventory analysis. But the main principle to remember is that Everything that uh, is significant should be included. Of course, you don't know <laughs> when you start, <laughs> and that's where it's a bit tricky. Uh, document all your data all the time, uh, and also uncertainties. So you make compilation of data. You will have a standard deviation. Uh, that's really important to document. Uh, if you don't have the data for it, it's not zero. Yeah. So if there's a data that is missing in any way, you should document it. Sometimes it might be because you're not sure. This might be bitten, but I don't know. But you need to document it. OK, not put zero. And there's something cut, called a cutoff criteria, is that the process may be excluded. If it contributes to less than, and then you define the cutoff criteria, 1% yeah, of uh, environmental impact. The only problem is that, again, you don't know before to start. <laughs> There is something called a sensitivity analysis. Uh, Yvonne, you, was, yeah. you were saying, so what is that? Can you explain? Uh, sensitivity is the um, effect of changing variables of my process in the final response. Mm -hmm. What kind of variable could that be? Or you can give an example with uh, your uh, yeah. process. Mm, I don't know. <coughs> if I study the production of dimethyl carbonate, mm -hmm. temperature is important because it defines the uh, chemical equilibrium mm -hmm. of the reaction. This is an example. Mm -hmm. So you can make it at 500 or at 200, well, I'd say. <laughs> for, for example, 200 and then see if you will have the different co-products. Yes, in this case, we need that temperature stay stable mm -hmm. around 5% five percent, five percent of the uh, optimal value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we need to control the temperature of the reaction. Mm -hmm. This is the same for pressure in this stage of column. That sounds very process engineer. Temperature, yeah, pressure, yeah, temperature, yeah. pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's uh, yes. So process parameters sometimes can define uh, ULCA. Uh, sometimes it can be about uh, like your emissions. N2O uh, is a greenhouse gas that contributes to global warming about 300 times. Uh, what CO2 does? Raw material is very important as well. 
resource? Yeah. But you should know when you, um, I think this, this is less likely to be sensitive because if you do it, like we were having the case of, uh, of rape, then you know you have rape, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you sh normally you know what you start from, but it is true if you have a waste that, case, that varies you a lot. the composition of the uh, raw material. Yeah, you have to know, definitely. But yeah, that's typically standard, but it's true you could have deviation that you want to test for. If it's uh, um, urban waste, and it's never the same uh, that people would <laughs> throw away, and you might have different uh, in the quality of it, so you might want to test for that. It's true. Yeah, as I was saying, it can be on the emissions, so a uh, parameter, so in tool, in the IPCC, uh, and they have it now they changed the standard, but it, it's like plus two hundred. The, the uncertainty range is like plus minus 300%, <laughs> so <laughs> it might be correct or 200, so, but then you should test that because it matters a lot since mm -hmm. we know this um, yeah, can change your balance. So anything that you be, believe might be sensitive and you're not sure, then you should test it. All right. When you use simulation, it's very easy to do that. When you, use, when you do simulation of the process, it's yeah. easy because you have to change. Yeah, but you don't know yet if it changes environmental impact that much, or maybe when you coupled it. No, yeah, yeah, but that's I think it's very variable to have this coupled together yeah. Yeah, to go all the way. Well, we used to do that in our studies, many cases, all time. But basically, uh, so you get it, so you change one parameter and you rerun the whole LC and see if it affects your results. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. For the uncertainty, there's a different way. Uh, in the ISO standard, this one is mentioned, the Monte Carlo. You can do it with Simapro, unless you use a consequential data. <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> it can be sometimes it doesn't work, but when it works, uh, it would look like this. So, uh, so that's just an example for one paper. Uh, you have, uh, so in this case, it will tell you how many times, so this value, you should read it as how many times A would be smaller than B. Mm -hmm. So uh, the global warming, that's for global warming here, impact of A uh, would be better or lower than mm -hmm. the one of B. So we there looked at three different crops, <coughs> ryegrass, willow, and miscanthus, to produce uh, or to be managed in four different ways, and our big digestion, gasification, co-combustion and, uh, no, combustion, sorry, and co-firing. So what it tells you here is that uh, ryegrass to gasification uh, would be better than ryegrass to anaerobic digestion 60% of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so that doesn't tell you much. <laughs> but when you have uh, something like this, then you can be sure that uh, this is, when you see that, okay, this cancer gasification, 100% uh, of the time would be better than this cancerous anaerobic digestion. So you can be sure of that conclusion. But there are other conclusions. When it's close to 50, like that, mm. you cannot really be sure. So it means that you have some uncertainty in your data uh, where you should be very careful in saying uh, that A is better than B. But when you have a number like that or like that, then you're a bit more confident. So the principle of Monte Carlo is that uh, when you document your data, uh, they come with a standard deviation and you document that as well. And then you have to have an, an idea of the distribution. Sometimes you don't, but there is recommendation which type of distribution to use uh, when you're not sure. And then you will run the LCA a certain number of times, typically 10,000 times is the value recommended. Uh, and it this is what you will see, how many of the time uh, A will be better than B. And it will simulate it through this uncertainty range that you supplied for the parameter. You can do it with Simapro. There are software like this one called Monte Calito uh, mm -hmm. that you can do it. There's, I think, also a different one that you can do. Any questions for the inventory or we attack the impact assessment? We attack? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So, uh, and I said it a bit earlier, but why impact assessment? So let's say that you go through your LCA, you have alternative A and B, and then uh, you document, okay, in total, in A, I have 3 kilograms of ammonia, I have 110 kilograms of CO2. In B, I have 1.7 kilograms of ammonia, 114 kilograms of CO2. Um, but then, what is best? You can't really tell. Uh, there, there's numbers go in different way for each, mm -hmm. and it's yeah, difficult to tell just from that. So you need one step extra, and it's the impact assessment. And it's divided into four main steps, and we will do these together. And the first one is the classification. So you have an emission. Okay, what does it contribute to? Which impact does this emission contribute to? Then you have characterization. Uh, so this is where you will uh, say, okay, how much could it contribute to a given impact as compared to the other substances? So we're saying CO2 contribute to global warming but in true contribute 300 times more. These are two optional steps, normalization. This is if you want to compare your different impacts together, but I will come back to how this can be done. And this one is if you want to say that one impact is more important than the other one and you want to give it more weight. Uh, I would never do this, personally, it would be very, um, but the environmental footprint method does provide a method to do that. Uh, but as scientists, I would prefer not to decide what is important and what is not. Um, uh, because, because it's very dangerous to, pr to provide a single score, then nobody is ever going to go and look back <laughs> what this consisted of. So. Um, do you know any impact category? Global warming. Global warming. I will write it down. Desertification. Acidification. Yeah. Human toxicity. Yes. Human toxicity. <laughs> but it has to do with nitrogen. Yeah. yeah. Phosphorus. Both, yeah. yeah. Phosphorus. Land use change. Do they have like category saying land use change? So it has always to be translated into. <coughs> some do. Some do, yeah. <coughs> Sorry? Land use. Land, land use, use, yeah. Yeah, this, this is sometimes uh, considered an impact, sometimes mm, an indicator. <laughs> But it's true, yeah. It, uh, uh, I'm writing some in particular for my example. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have some other? How many categories are there? Sorry? Yeah. How many categories? Uh, yeah, how many can there be? <laughs> the PEF has 16. 16? Yeah, the PEF, but uh, global warming, other impacts, yeah. But what about the. Is it related to water? But to, yeah, yeah, yeah. there are actually a lot of, now it, there's no metrics agreed yet, but there's a lot of people working, working on uh, water footprint uh, impact. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. Biodiversity? The same there. The method is not exactly there, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people working on it, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, there is um, the Montreal Protocol. Does it ring any bell? Limiting some substances at the end of the 80s. CFC. Yes. What was it for? Ozone, uh, ozone, ozone depletion. depletion. Ozone yeah. Depletion. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on contrary, we can deplete ozone, but we can also have too much where we don't want it. Mm -hmm. Like uh, in China, they have smoke, and it's because of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can. Call it. It's photochemical ozone formation. So it's sunlight together with noxes, and mm -hmm. then it will uh, yeah. produce the smog. Uh, and then it's it's important to come to realize that some of these impacts are global, 
like global warming, <laughs> like ozone depletion, mm -hmm. and some other are more local. Mm -hmm. uh, human tox is one, acidification is one, eutrophication is also more local, and the smog the same, it's also a local impact. So it depends where the substance is emitted. Well, here it doesn't matter if you have it emitted in China, uh, it's going to be the effect everywhere. So uh, I want to play another game, and that's going to be the classification game. <laughs> and I will give you substances. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Six. Okay, so two each. Um, ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> so you can pick up two substances. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Yes. I think you got it. <laughs> And uh, if you can put them, uh, assign them to one category. And it can be in more than one. And if it's the case, uh, then you can tick tear a bit of the paper and <laughs> write again. So, global warming, CO2, methane, and 2 o Can we consider CO as a substance contributing to global warming? Human toxicity. Human toxicity. Um, it actually is in the global warming. Uh, it depends on particulate matter, uh, mostly. So, incomplete combustion. And, but we don't have it <laughs> as an impact. <laughs> and the uh, photochemical ozone formation. Yeah, yeah the small group, basically. It belongs a bit more there, but it's also in the global one. In between. Here it's important to remember, so you have these two, uh, carbon-based, but also this nitrogen-based one that is 300 times yeah. the global one potential of C2. Uh, ozone depletion, this will be, yeah, exactly. Everything, CFC, HCFC, uh, this one here, I put it there as well because uh, you will see it a lot in the Singapore uh, process. It comes in all the electricity process. So, um, yes, global warming and very high. This is 300 times, this is 1,000 times. And this was a problem because they were banned uh, for the... Uh, yeah, oh, sorry, yeah, they were banned for ozone depletion, these but they also contribute to global warming a lot, a lot, a lot. So, um, so yeah, we have a trouble with the refrigerant as they are reaching the end of life. Really have to make sure that uh, they are not emitted. Uh, yes, so SFC, yes. So these two. Um, and this one, I actually have it only under global warming. Uh, then we have, uh, yes, acidification, that's really good. So the acid rain uh, with SO2. Uh, ammonia, 
it, it is fine there, but it also contributes to acidification. But it is also fine there. So okay. where, yes, where you could cut it in two. <laughs> yeah, you can put it in both. Um, yes, okay. There's an impact called ionizing radiation where we could have put this nuclear one, <laughs> but it it uh, it is also there. Heavy metals typically under uh, human toxicity, ecotoxicity. Um, the smog, yeah, the noxes. And uh, every time you have nitrogen, then you can think it probably has an effect here too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, phosphorus, same, probably has an effect here too. So this is basically the classification step. So all your substances are attributed to one or more impact categories. Uh, yeah. You can find it uh, according to e e which method of impact assessment you select, then you can find the, the weight of these substances. Sorry. Uh, in CIMAPRO, for instance, it's easy to see. Yeah. Um, so, in a schematic way, it can look like that methane, yeah, going to. Global warming or information, CO2 going to global warming, so you do that. Then uh, global warming, how do I express it? There's different, that's where our different impact assessment methods come. Uh, can be per kilogram of CO2 equivalent, that's what most people do because all methods use the IPCC, and thanks God. <laughs> if we should start to have new methods there as well. Uh, for the for the local impact, there we find more variety. Uh, so this is one example. Sometimes it's expressed in kilograms SO2 equivalent, uh, ozone formation, here um, eutrophication, kilo, sometimes kilogram N equivalent, kilogram P equivalent. But there is a um, yeah, as I say, different method coming with different metrics. But uh, what tends to be the, there, there were some, an effort before called the ILCD, that was international, but mostly European, and they tried to m make a lot of reflections on what impact, what method for each of the impact uh, should be selected to have a metric for the substance. Uh, but uh, then the environmental footprint, or product environmental footprint, is the latest one. So they reuse what has been done in the ILCD, change a little bit of the thing, <laughs> updated it further, and that's the method that tend to be used, uh, especially in Europe. So um, I would recommend that. However, you can check some of the, well, the way they do, you don't need to accept everything, <laughs> among other for the climate change, because they will not always count if it's coming from biomass, they might assign it a weight of zero. And there's disagreement on this. Um, yes, so there is a, the commission issued a recommendation in 2013 where it tells which uh, type of uh, method should be used for each impact, a recommendation. And then the PEF, of course, is the same people behind it, who builds on that, uh, but has changed it a little bit. And they, they give so you can extract this table from the latest uh, report of the PEF, which I give a, a reference for. Mm -hmm. And then they give robustness level. So one means that uh, they are really sure of the method. But some, some impact categories are three, and some alter. Sometimes we'll decide to exclude the Im impact with a score here of robustness of three, saying that we're not so sure anyway of how to quantify them. And yeah, that's the case for the toxicity impact. Um, you said about the water footprint, you said about biodiversity, uh, there's a lot, and then I was talking about should we include biogenic carbon or not, uh, and then how, there's this document here, it was uh, from late 2017, uh, and it has very, it issued the latest recommendation on these emerging impacts, so it's also a very good reference. Uh, when we do yeah, the characterization, so um, 
each impact has a reference substance, as I was showing earlier. It can be kilogram CO2 equivalent, it can be kilogram of SO2. And then we will assign a weight to each of our, so methane will have uh, 25 times, for example, um, it's not the right value anymore, but the global warming potential of CO2. Uh, but this factor can depend according to which method you use. <laughs> uh, most method reference substance and equivalent factor are available in CIMAPRO, so you can see uh, exactly what is being used. Uh, yes, and then you can have some documentation about these methods and the uh, report number three of EcoInvent. It's a bit old, but still uh, nicely detailed. And then I'll find a link also earlier today. Yeah on the history of these methods and the background for them. So let's say that we do that. We choose a method and then we apply it and we get, uh, we have these four impact categories that we are interested in for option A, uh, which is um, not treating the sludge, so reference case, and option B, it's a treatment for sludge. Uh, and then this is what we get as a result. Global warming in option A, 114 kilogram of CO2 equivalent. In option B, much more. So treating doesn't look too good here. Acidification, however, we have a big reduction of the acidification if we treat. Photochemical ozone formation doesn't seem a good idea to treat. But uh, and nutrient enrichment either. So if I tell you that, uh, should we treat or not treat? What would you say? You would say treat? Depends on your priority. Of your priority. Yeah. 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 Why would you say treat? And there's only one indicator that's good for treating. Because it is important, as you said, that if it's your priority. Okay, so you decide that education is priority <laughs> in your society. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I guess it depends on your priority, what is, uh, what is it that is important. Yeah, or you, because this is what you will get uh, that's your, uh, as an LCA practitioner, then you need to uh, interpret, okay, what this all means. There is some, one more step you can do to trying to compare this impact uh, between them. It's called a normalization. And the way this is done is that they will typically say, okay, for example, uh, what was the impact of climate change by an average European in the reference year? So in the methods of uh, 1994, uh, we know that an average European was, uh, oh, in Europe we were emitting that much kilogram of CO2, there were that many people in Europe at that time, so they divided, so an average European had that much CO2 equivalent. So therefore, um, uh, we, uh, we can do the same exercise for acidification and we do the same exercise for each of the impact uh, and then we have, we have a metric per person equivalent related to the population. This is uh, one method that has been done. So then you can compare, you, you can say, okay, how uh, you multiply it by your factor in, pers in person equivalent here and then you have a score for all of these in person mm -hmm. equivalent, so you can somehow compare. Uh, yes. So yeah, it provides a relative impression of the environmental impact caused by your system compared to the impact of one average person. Um, so yeah, it's to extend the diagram I was having earlier. You have your impact. You have your characterized metric, and then how much of these are emitted per world citizen or European citizen for a reference year, and then you get all your score in person equivalent. And you can go that step further, which is assigning a weight, but I would say, <laughs> yeah, I would avoid doing that. These metric, again, uh, these factors, they are available in each of these methods. It's good that you're aware what is it, what is the reference here. And, uh, I personally tend not to use a normalization much because again, um, it depends on your stakeholder and it's really important to discuss with your audience to see what kind of results talk to them. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't talk much. 
person equivalent. Uh, so. Example, you have normalized results, so you have uh, your different system, and then they are all expressed on the y-axis of the same unit here, here, person equivalent, and then you can see how much of each impact contribute to that person equivalent score. So we are very good in time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I have after it's about Simapro, and I think I will uh, wait until we are uh, in the computer room after lunch. Just one thing I can tell you now, in, in case I forget, remember that Simapro is just a software. So sometimes people say I got um, the value from Simapro. No, 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 no. You got it from the equipment database, maybe, <laughs> but not from Simapro. Simapro is just a software. Mm -hmm. It just calculates what it would take you ages. You know, you would need to do that to find your substance, for put it together for all the, the processes, then adjust it with your reference flow, how much you have in your system, and then go to the metrics, how much in CO2 equivalent. So it's a very tedious exercise, and the software can do it for you. So it's a bit less work, <laughs> uh, but that's all it does. It's uh, calculation software. I don't know if you have questions about what we've said today. Something uh, is really the essential of LCAs. Now you really have the the ground material to go further. I don't know if there's something new for you that you didn't know before. It's a good show. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, idea of not including the pig farm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see. I mean, uh, your colleague Caroline and Claire, uh, we work together, and at the beginning, it was the same. They were, but uh, <laughs> they didn't like it. <laughs> uh, but now um, they embrace it much. But they were not doing like that before, so it was going against. Uh, um, practice that they had done for many years, but yeah, they both agree. Oh, we see why we should do it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not completely cradle to grave. It's not completely cradle to grave. In which sense? Like pig farm, like we are using directly pig fat. Yeah. And but that's a cradle. The fat, the pig fat, then becomes your cradle in this sense. Yeah. Yeah, to me, it's depend on the scope that you set, right? The cradle to grave. It depends on the score. No, no, score. That score. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, but credit to grade means that uh, you should include everything that has impact uh, in introducing this system in the world. And so, credo can be the, the pig fat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't think about the, should I say, the period concept. 50 years, so in 50 years, will the straw be there even? Like, will we have enough straw because of the weather or whatever? Yeah. Or will it be good to use straw because it won't be enough for something else? Or will we need bioethanol in 50 years? Yeah. So I didn't think about that. If we make the investment, then it's going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> but so how, yeah. how is that implemented? This is your PhD project. <laughs> <laughs> because what she's going to try to do is really to look year per year. So uh, in this year, we are we we're trying to see how the, the system can change because mm -hmm. we are studying something for France, but the rest of the world is changing, and there's going to be investment in place. So we're trying to look at that, and then the marginal at each year can be different. Mm -hmm. And we will try to look at our emissions uh, and choice of processes in a year per year basis up to 2050, which is our interesting case. And that hasn't been uh, done uh, so far in this way. So we see, yeah, if, if it gives us a DLC that will uh, yield a different answer. It's much more precise you know, in any case, so, but requires a lot of thought. <laughs> Anything else? About yeah. the normalization? Yeah. You said you, you were not um, very uh, keen, yeah, yeah. keen to, to use it, but I have the feeling that maybe in some cases it, it can help 
um, to take the final decision. For example, the, the table you showed us with the option A and B, yeah. and we were not sure. finally not sure and not able to, mm -hmm. to choose. Um, I don't know, maybe the next step with the normalization can help. The issue is why it is there. Mm -hmm. That's the, the, the you can, yeah, you will not put, I would never put it on its own for sure. So okay. together with characterized results, but not just normalized result okay. uh, on its own. Uh, but it is true. If it's really not obvious, then it can be uh, a way to help decision maker. But mm -hmm. don't forget that uh, you are the scientist and you are the one that will know everything about the system mm -hmm. <laughs> the best. Yeah. Uh, but the person receiving your report might not read everything yeah. in the detail and the 400 pages that you explain all the calculation okay. so be very careful that the single diagram will not be used and that can happen okay so this is what always you have to think of uh, how do i communicate this result and ensure that it's going to be used that yeah that mm, the information which really from it reflect what it says mm -hmm. For valuation, valuation, you don't use uh, really, you don't use it. But but the coefficients, it applies some coefficients to each uh, impact to get a unique value. Uh, yeah, one score. One, yeah. one score. But this, this uh, coefficients or it's experts, experts have uh, decided these coefficients or not. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, in the, P, I mean the PEF, uh, or environmental footprint, they do define some evaluation methods. So it's experts from the GRC. There's a lot of, um, it's not scientific uh, broad agreement. Uh, there's yes. a <laughs> so, um, and, but it can be uh, because, for example, I'm interested in this transition towards low fossil carbon for France. Mm. And then it was going to use the results of my LCAs as a French um, stakeholder. So we really had this discussion, okay, who are they? Because climate change is the driver here. We have to be honest, but there's trade-off. And how do we, uh, that's what can discriminate, okay, let's do parallels this way, not this way. Uh, but what, what is it that is important for my uh, stakeholder? So it can be that they tell you, no, no, but uh, climate change, okay, 70% uh, of the choice of a decision should be that. And then you can make the calculation and see. But uh, the, the, the danger again is that this single number would be used. I was told by a colleague one, uh, from Italy uh, that uh, that's why economists are so liked because they provide a single number. You know, should we do A or B? Okay, <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> it's very chicken sharp. <laughs> we don't do that in LCA. Perhaps we should. I don't know. That's what she was saying. But. I think it's dangerous then, uh, because what comes behind that single number, it's a lot of hypotheses that can change yes. in the future uh, when you change your preference. Mm -hmm. So a lot of disclaimer if you do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>